everyone, Alexandra here. Today we are looking over a webinar software this time, and that is Livestorm. Now keep in mind, there is a free plan for the tool, which you can use for any event that's up to 20 minutes. So normally I would recommend that you get the paid premium plan so you can have as many webinars and live events as you wish. Now to get started, this will be your main dashboard where you can just go ahead and create a new event. Now keep in mind, you might be watching this tutorial for nothing really because the tool is very simple to use and you really don't need any tutorial. You can just go ahead and start creating your first event. Just click on new event and I'm going to add in here a catchy name like SEO hacks with me and then you can go on and change the URL to just make it more user friendly. And this is also good if you want to remember it later on. Then you're going to decide who has the right to speak during the actual event. So in a normal setting, with your most usual situation, you would have only the team members and the guests speaking. And this is the ideal version option you want to go for with a webinar or any live event. And then you have the option where everyone gets to speak. And this is good if you want to use Livestorm for meetings or instant meetings, which we will get to a bit later. Then you're going to set in your time zone and basically when you want the event to happen. Keep in mind, you can actually add multiple sessions and schedule all of these under a single event. So maybe if you have like a series of different webinars with maybe a different speaker every time or different tips, different case studies, but they are tied to the same idea, you can connect them in here. Then you can add your team members. And from here on the highlighted part, you will decide who is going to appear on the registration page. Click on create event. And again, you have your general settings from the name and URL of the event to just adding like a brief description now, I recommend going into a bit more detail with this. So you can maybe say, add in some stats, then put in your hook, then present your speakers and their expertise, then maybe go through like a bullet list of some things that people will learn about in this webinar and so on. Then here at the bottom, you have a nifty trick to add in the estimated duration of the webinar. Again, if you are on the free plan, you only have 20 minutes for each webinar. So we're just going to go with 15. Keep in mind, everything is saved as we change. So we can just move on to our optional settings. But even though these are optional, I recommend you look over them because this is where you decide what kind of information you want to get in the registration field. So the default version, requires the email, first name and last name, and then it also adds in the avatar, but you can just delete this from here or go on and add a new field, like maybe a company, a job title, or whatever you want to. Then you also want to add in your consent in here. So if maybe you want to get their email addresses and then send retargeting messages or just add them to the email list, you can add this in here. And you can just add in the consent text in here and of course make this maybe a required field then here at the bottom i recommend checking the display this event on my company page and right now our company page looks like this but i'm going to show you how to edit it soon you also want to keep the enable registration page option on and you can only disable this if you want to run private or paid events and in this case, you have to use Zapier to register attendees instead of doing it through Livestorm. There is this other option which you can allow registration only for people with a work email address. So this is entirely up to you. I prefer to let everyone in just in case they might want to sign up with their non-work email address. Then we're heading to the event room. And this is where we get a visualization of what the chat section is going to look like. And you can actually switch between the views. 
So you can see how an attendee will see this and how a team member will. And some handy options in here are maybe disabling the chat tab so people can only leave questions or answer polls. And you can also just close the questions, close the polls and just keep the chat open. And for everything in here, you have some extra options. Plus, you can always just hide attendees' last names if you want to keep it a bit less formal. And another thing from the People tab, I also recommend having this Hide from Attendees option on because if you show attendees, then everyone can go on and see who is part of this webinar and they might want to just have their privacy you know, respected. And there's just people who don't want to be seen at the webinar. If they do, they will probably interact with you in the chat box anyway. So always leave hide from attendees option on. A big must is to allow attendees to download shared PDF presentations or whatever you want to share with them. Then we're heading over to design. And this is where we design our registration page. So you're going to change, you know, the colors of maybe the buttons, the background, and you can always just add a logo in here, add a cover image, customize this cover image for every single event, and then you can reuse the same image to promote the webinar. And notice here you have the option to keep a detailed or a light version. The detailed version will allow you to add some more details about your event in here. And then you can also check out what the emails will look like. And again, you have this option to edit the button. But keep in mind that any change you make to either the registration page or emails. So for example, if I turn this button here to yellow and I go back to the registration page, the button has changed here too. So this is super handy for keeping the brand colors on point. Next, we're heading over to our email settings. And this is super important because you get to decide when you want people to be reminded of the event. And you can play with editing these emails. Just head over to edit content. And you can write, you know, the email subject, some pre-header text. So what appears in the inbox, that short snippet that essentially describes what the email is about. Then you have the button text and just usual options. And of course, you can preview what this will look like. And then you have the email signature option in here. So you can just change this. And maybe you sometimes want to send this from a person or from the company as a whole. Now we are heading over to the recording and on-demand options, which are the forever debate in marketing to webinars and live events. What I would recommend is always enabling the recording option and then going and maybe giving the replay access to anyone on demand, or you can just take the recording and post it again on your YouTube channel or anywhere you want people to be able to access this because you are essentially looking to reuse that content so you're not just maybe wasting it on like five people who attended your webinar and didn't convert, you can just take that video again and reuse it to convert more people. Then we have some integrations. You can just go to set up new integrations and you will find a bunch of apps you can connect Livestorm with and this is super handy. For example, the intercom integration allows you to add your intercom messenger to the company page registration pages, and on-demand events so people can just ask a question before they sign up for the event. Then, like with any tool a marketer would love using, you have the automation options you can enable. Now, this is handy if, for instance, you want to, let's say, start and play an event in real time but you're not actually there. So you kind of want to schedule it and make it look like it's a live webinar instead of an on-demand one. So you can do things like start an event, add the automation, and then I'm going to add one more automation, maybe like playing a video. So you can decide to play the video of your choice, maybe after 20 minutes or something like this. 
Or other options are to redirect attendees to a page maybe at the end of a webinar so that they can learn more about what you are teaching them essentially. Now here at the top, you have some extra settings, including recordings. So this is where you will find the recording of your webinar if you have, again, enabled the option from here. Then you have the email invites, for which you must first always just publish the event. And basically what happens is that you will see here who has been invited in case you have decided to share these direct invites. Then you have your people stats. This is just like an overall look at like your funnel. So how many people have registered for your webinar? How many people have visited the registration page? And you will just see lots of extra stats in here. Then again, if you look back to your sessions, you can always find them in here and just look at things like who is attending an event, what the event room looks like. And basically, when you want to actually start the event, you're going to have to set up your webcam and mic, or you can just join as a viewer. And this is kind of what the webinar stage looks like and how people can interact with this on the right side of the screen. And of course, you can always just go on and edit an event. And actually, if you click here, you can even delete a session. So you're just left with one like this. Now here at the very top, right next to the name of the event, you have some extra settings like sharing the event, maybe duplicating this, and then you're going to essentially be able to reuse the settings that you have under one webinar. Some other options are just like embedding this registration form maybe on your website. And then we are heading to the registration page, either from here or from here at the very top. And you can decide which registration page you want to go to. This is basically what the page looks like. And you can actually use this view too to edit it a bit. For example, you can go on and add some information about your company. And again, you have some extra options for editing the event information the host and some details about them and on the right side people will get the option to actually share the event plus you can always check what the light version looks like and now we are heading back to the event room either from here or from the main page of the event and you have the event room here at the top or here so it's super easy to access and it will take us to the room now, once you're ready with all this, you can go to publishing this event and then you're just going to share it whenever you want, either via email, via social media, directly. You can even add people manually, but always do ask for their consent. Ideally, use a plethora of methods to promote your event. And it's super fun and just super easy to use that simply when you go to the event dashboard, you will get to see your stats, like your general stats in here. But remember that Livestorm is not just about your classic webinars. There's also the instant meetings feature. Again, go to new meeting room. I'm going to type in something like my team meeting. And you can just edit the slug of the URL as well. And invite multiple team members and click on create meeting room. So this here, if you had to just copying the link, you can share with your team. It's kind of like Google Meet, if you will. Then you're going to be able to access the room. So you're basically using Livestorm for both team meetings and live events. Then there's one more people option in here, which again helps you kind of track everyone across all events. So these are people who have been at some point in your sales funnel. Again, one more link to the apps marketplace in here. And you can always just see the latest updates for the tool. If you head over to your icon, your avatar here, you have besides your account settings, your company page. So this is like a separate feature in Livestorm. You can also choose to disable it, but you might also want to use it so that you can gradually promote all of your events. So maybe you want to post the link like this embed here, 
on your website and it's going to show up kind of like this with some upcoming events and people can sign up for any event that's of interest to them. And again, you have some options in here to edit this a bit, to change maybe the name of your company. And really that's it, it's super simple. Also under your avatar profile-ish settings, you have an interesting connectivity test, which I recommend you always start before any live event. And really this is it. I hope you enjoyed this kind of review. I love this tool. Yes, it might be a bit simple. Really the features you have right now in the event room are like a chat, some polls, some private questions, but this should do for most events and there's always other integrations you can opt for if you want something a bit different. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and have an amazing day. Bye.